We are here at the International Red Cross offices in Tel Aviv delivering this petition from Hadassah, the Women's Zionist Organization of America. We are here representing the 300,000 from across the United States. We are demanding the ICRC as a humanitarian organization from one to another, visit the hostages, check on the hostages, make sure they're okay. We're here at Hostage Square, and as you can see, the table is set up for all those who were hostages since the beginning of this war with Hamas. And to be here, to experience this, to talk with the families. As a mother, I feel their pain. There's not one minute since 8.20 on Saturday morning, October 7th, that I haven't been in complete agony and despair. And it's not just psychological, it's spiritual, it's mental, it's, it's physical. And so every morning we wake up and we say, now we'll pretend to be people. Because otherwise we can't save him. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm in the fetal position on the floor of my bedroom sobbing, maybe that's what I'm feeling, but that won't save them. So when I need to, I go and I cry, and then I wipe my face, and I say, now you have to go and save him. So pretend to be a person, and that's what I do. rehabilitation building was a dream of mine since before I became chair of HMO. This amazing building is giving the State of Israel once more a bridge to close the gap with which is needed. Baruch atah adonai nameinu melech haolam sheachianu v'kiyamanu v'higianu l'azman hazeh Unbelievable. This is great. Here we are standing in rehabilitation. That's what it's all about. Because it's probably a once in a lifetime opportunity when your dream suddenly becomes a major national need and necessity. And it's not only, we're not talking just about this building rehabilitation. We're talking about what our nation needs. It's spacious, there's windows, there's a view, and it's extremely important because people that undergo rehabilitation it's not an acute care hospital. They come, some of them, some of the wounded we have. These people will require long rehabilitation and they may spend about two months, three months as inpatients in this place. And the difference is that this is spacious, this gives them the ability to understand that they're not in a hospital, they're in a different environment. I woke up at around uh, 6.30 from the massive, massive attack of rockets and at some point we start to hear a gunfire and I remember opening the glass window and opening the, the metal window, turning off the nets and uh, I asked the are you ready? And she said, I count one, two, three, and then I have a memory blank until the point that uh, we're both on the grass outside the, outside the shelter, outside my, my house. 
את אייק אוף ר' בלנקריט, אין אי אסקר, אר יו קיי, אר יו הוט, אר יו הרט, סאמואר, אין שי טז מי... נו, אני אוקיי, בת יו, שי גוז לב, בת יו. אין זה אני לוקט מי פיט, אני אסי איצור ברנד. At that point I thought, if we're all going to be dead today, I want to be together. And I tell her, we're going to Ima and so we're going to your mom and to your brother. Indeed, about an hour later, after I arrived there, a terrorist arrived to this house as well. And luckily, this time they only shut the door. Scared us to death once again. And, and that was the feeling. We were hiding in the dark. A kid, a baby, One year old, how do you keep him silent and put the kids in the closet and horror movie. Since I was rescued, I was hospitalized at Adassa and Karen for about uh, three weeks. They do miracles over there. They put me back on my feet. Uh, all the all the burns are almost completely healed and after three weeks I'm being uh, uh, transferred to here my, re my rehabilitation uh, ends and it's very hard to live because it's such a <laughs> it's such a wonderful place to 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 be and uh, they literally put you back on track. Hadassah was always there for the unity of the Jewish people. We went to visit Hadassah a few times, and it's unbelievably impressive. We are great admirers, and I can tell you that one of the happiest things during these three months is seeing someone um, who you met um, in intensive care, and you see them again a few weeks after in rehabilitation. It brings a little bit of joy in the midst of these very difficult times. So you have a big part in such miracles happening. And there's one item, last item is mental health. Right. Yeah. Which is part of our rehabilitation center. Because we look at it and say, it's not just the scar you can see, it's the scar you can't see. Exactly. That is so that important. Comes out in so many ways. And it's affected everyone. Yes. We are not strong. They say to me, you are strong. No, I'm not strong. They took my heart. We will help you. We are here in Kfaraza, and we are here bearing witness to the heinous acts that have occurred here. This isn't war. This was extermination. 
this was intent and to see this and to feel this and to see what these families what these young adults what these children had to go through this is unacceptable this is an unbelievable scene it almost looks fake i can understand now seeing it why the world thinks maybe it is a fake i don't think it's a fake i can still smell smoke i can see where people lived their, their effects, their gardens. I now know how my grandparents in the Holocaust must have felt when they were being under attack and how being taken away and dragged away. Uh, to, to have this attack on people who were just trying to live their lives, on their neighbors, who knows what the solution will be? but the world needs to see this horror that we're looking at right now. The morning in question, Hamas sent uh, groups of between 70 and 100 terrorists to every settlement uh, throughout the area. Uh, and the group that was coming our way got into there and by sheer luck or by some right. sort of a God help, whatever you believe in, uh, there was a group of uh, Israeli soldiers from a unit called Golani that was patrolling the area. And they, they just crashed into this, into this uh, terrorist group. They were all pretty badly wounded, but this fight alerted us to understand that the terrorists were very close. We had time to get guns and to, to arm ourselves. There were maybe five or six guys, but that was enough. The other thing that happened, there is a police officer in our kibbutz that had a radio in his car. And through this radio, he called the police force in the hotel. And they sent a group of five guys from the border patrol that fought like Rambos. So in Kibbutz Niram, nobody entered. It's unimaginable that this amount of very, very young people died here, and being here feels like a graveyard, but for all of humanity. Yeah, I know nothing can be compared to the Holocaust, but uh, still, it's about the same feeling that I'm having while I'm standing here. I look at these faces. They could be my children. My children could go to a concert like this. Nowhere would you imagine that where young people go to celebrate life, peace, and being together on a hug would something like this happen. There is a lot of weird, scary story about this place. But I don't know, I, maybe I'm a little bit more optimistic. It sounds horrible to say, but as a person who used to dance here before, lost her lovely friend, I do want to believe that that's Good soon enough dance again. we will dance in here. Maybe yeah, not okay. here particularly, but a little bit more there. It will take us a while, but we will dance again. One area that we haven't really gone into depth on that is really, really critical is the element of uh, the truly awful, premeditated and um, devastating uh, sexual violence that took place on October 7th. And uh, when we were working together to plan this week, our feeling was that we cannot complete uh, our time here, particularly as a women's organization, without uh, going into depth on this particular issue. I'm going to tell 
tell you what we witnessed, me and my team at the Shura base, um, where all of the victims of the Hamas massacre were brought since October 7th. I will not overstate or understate anything. I'm going to only tell you things that we have seen with our own eyes. Our unit uh, trained for mass casualty events, but we really, really, really did not ever imagine anything like what happened. These barbarians did not show these women any honor in life, and, but at least we showed them deep love and gentleness as our teams prepared them for burial. But what happened on 7 October was not less. It was terrible. It was terrible as a gynecologist taking care of sexual victims for about 20 years. I never saw, I never saw such violence like during rape or gang rape, uh, there are broke, there are fractures of pelvic bones. There were women with fracture of the, with broken pelvis because of so violent rape. And those things should be uh, you as a representative of, you know, of, of Israel all over the world should talk about the things. I came from a, from a difficult situation back home. So uh, uh, with the help of this uh, boarding school and the staff, I, uh, I moved to another uh, family that lives here in uh, Natania. And it's very exciting to see, along with your help, that, uh, the, how this uh, boarding school developed. For me, it's like a second home. It gave me a jump start to, to my life and to the, the service that I did. I was a sergeant in uh, the military and in, uh, during this uh, war. And this place really saved me from uh, where I've come. You can be very, very proud of this project of the, these two youth villages that the Hadassah organization are supporting because the resilience that it showed during these days was we were able to, to do this because of all what we do all year and all these years. The past three months have been unbearably devastating. And when I'm having a really bad day, which happens at least once or twice a week, I've discovered that what I need to do is get in my car, I live in Haifa, and come here. And I just have to walk around the village and see these young people and know that this is what it's about. This is our future. This is why we have to do what we're doing. And they are why it's going to be okay. Bring them home now! Bye.